Matt G, The Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko. Let's talk about uh, Ingan. Usa pe Pingan? Usa? Usa pe Pingan? Min? Mm. Ah, no. Doesn't rise anymore. <laughs> ah, doesn't rise anymore. <laughs> ah, there's no one at home. <laughs> Ah, it's us too late. <laughs> now that's what happens. To, you, you know, you know, I had an opportunity to actually um, uh, uh, share this with a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and school kids, that yeah. if you abuse drugs at an early age, it will affect your, 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 your ability. Are you being serious? I saw Vugi. Bro, I saw Vugi the way it used to Vuga before. Yeah. 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 It doesn't. It How doesn't. ironic. Your name is Vugani. And besides, besides, I don't get hard on when I don't have money. Mm. I mean, the money turns me on. Mm. I can't be in a relationship when I don't, when I'm not in a comfort zone. I need to be, I need to be moneyed. I need to have all my toys in order. Then I need to have my bank balance in order. I need mm. to have a bank manager that actually has an appointment with me. Mm. That turns me on. Mm. You see now, and then now I must be, you know, just taking crumbs from the other guys. <laughs> Ah, that doesn't make it rise. But but in, in your time, like how many famous chicks were you smashing? Yes, sis. Maybe who didn't I smash? Wow. Nah, I I I had the opportunity to go to bed with Mary J. Blige. That was you the thing. Well, you lying. Me. Drop that fucking thing of yours. <laughs> yeah. For real. Yeah. What was uh, it was during the Peter Stuyvesant Music Spectacular when she was down here in the country with Casey and Jojo. Um, we, well, um, nothing happened. Ooh, ooh. Now that's radio. Mm. But we did share a bed. <laughs> <laughs> and we shared a joint together. <laughs> hey, you had me hook, line, and sinker. Exactly. <laughs> that is called in Radio TSL, my friend. Yeah. Time spent listening. Uh, do you remember this thing that you did on air where you're like, yo, guys, this is, you're doing breakfast. I think you were standing mm. in for school. You're getting at six. You're like, guys, yo, some shit happened last night. Fuck. Yeah. You guys are never ready for this. I, but I'll tell you after the sports. Yeah. Half past six comes. You're like, ah, you know what? I'll tell you after the news. But each um, interval, you're breaking down what happened and it involved drugs, it involved women. And unprotected sex. And unprotected sex. Yeah. And then at 9 a.m. before you went out, yeah. You were like, ah, but then I woke up and realized it was all a dream. Hey! And then I played, yeah. it was all a dream. Yeah. <laughs> I used to read Word of Magazine, Salt and Pepper, Heavy D, up in a limousine, Do you know how many hanging people? pictures on my wall. Every Saturday, rep attack, Mr. Magic, Molly Mall. Now, that was pure radio right there. Do you know there. how many people listened that goes down, in the car? That goes down. I had people that actually didn't even go to work. I had yeah. people that were like, how can you do this to us? That was one of my greatest moments. How, right does, that, how does that come? How does that, like, when do you think of something crazy like that? You, do, you see, the thing is, when you think of it, um, it doesn't, it, 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 you won't execute the way it's supposed to be. It doesn't manifest. It doesn't. Mo Flavor tried to do it after me, <laughs> and he just overprepared himself because it was after the Shell and the Italy Grand Prix Monaco event that um, I, I, just, I had the Just winner. explain what happened with that segment. No, it was just, stance. in the moment, was, was just... You started it in the morning. At I started it in the morning, yeah. and it was never planned. Yeah, what did? Uh, uh, it, it was not even on my clock. Mm. You know, it, it just kept on adding up, and then I knew... Uh, you know what? With me, I can feel the audience. On my shoulders. That is why I used to walk around. Whenever I felt audience and I felt my listeners, I'd actually start walking down like this. <laughs> like like they are on. They are on. And I, I was on on them. It's like, it's like, it's like a build-up to a good sex moment mm. where you kiss and the kiss is just so nice. You just don't want to just shag. Mm. You know, and then you, you build on that moment. You want to just quickly together just, just run to the kitchen and go grab a bottle of wine or champagne. And, you know, it's not planned. Mm. You just know all your corners and where everything of yours is structured in such a way that when you execute it, it's not like I'm having sex with someone uh, in a hotel mm. you know i know where i've placed my condoms i know where i've placed this i know where to find that and then i build on that moment but the nice thing is that the person that i'm doing that to mm. is not aware of what i'm doing to them mm. now those are levels because now i'm carrying you through so when i'm carrying you through you don't know what's going to be next because mm. i haven't opened up my whole house to you 
And then when I throw you in the pool, it's like, you have a pool? Wow. It's what we call the wow effect in radio. Mm. You must be able to dig into the wow moment mm. of your listeners and your audience. It's like that. You carry them through. Don't drop the moment. Don't drop the ball. Keep it going and keep them. Three hours is a short time. Hence, that is why we work for three hours a day. Yeah. Ah, people don't know, dude. Fuck, you used to Drop that bomb. <laughs> Because I feel I'm still sitting on 100,000. Get more juice here. Ah, no, no, no. No, Zintle is still outdoing me. You okay. said she's on 200? 200,000. Let's go gross. Okay, tell me about the story. Yeah, 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 the game. When you interviewed the game. When I interviewed the game, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there wasn't special. There were, look, the game, the game uh, I, I was given the game on the last hour of the show. And then uh, they gave me the address, and then YFM actually took me to where the game is. And I think it was in uh, thing in Santon. And then we get there, you know, the game had a girl there on the side. And then, you know, he had his bodyguard and entourage. And I, I was with Nipo at the time. You mm. remember Nipo? Mm. So um, we got upstairs. We decided to do things with the game. And the girl was there. And then from there, he had a gig at the Standard Bank Arena where he gave that little boy that uh, bling uh, thingy, that yes, bling yes, chain. Yes, yes, yes. And that time I was with all these girls and, you know, I, 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 was, just, I was just out of it. I was, I was just you were out, high. I was, I, was, I, was, I was too high. <laughs> I was too high. And, 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 and we really got along with the game in such a way that there was even a moment where we were, because I used to live on that edge where it was like, fuck, let's, 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 let's fly out. Mm. Let's do US. Mm. I was like, yes, yes let's fucking go. Because <laughs> I was like that guy. I, I never thought twice. I was like, fuck YFM. Why? Uh, I want to work for WPLS now. <laughs> 107.5 New York City or Hot 98. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so, yeah. But uh, that was part of my growth, yeah. you know. And then uh, you once mentioned on air that Trevor Noah was Shabla Gastin. Yeah, he did. Mm. Trevor Noah, he knows it. You know it. When I was driving there, uh, okay, uh, let me not name drop cars here. <laughs> but the bottom line is he used to annoy me in so many ways. His show was, all, was before mine. Mm. He wants to sit on in my show. Yeah. And then he brings in this girl who's his friend that I decided to date. And then we had, uh, it was during the introduction. Who's of, the girl? Uh, I'm not going to mention her name. Okay. Yeah, but one of, you, you, I think maybe she divergenized him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But she showed him what I showed her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How it should be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but, but, but uh, look, at the end of the day, we went to Kyle Army. Trevor took offense. We never ever spoke with Trevor after that. Mm. And 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 you know what? I'm 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 so happy with his success. And I wish I took him serious at the time. Mm. You know, there are those people in life that you meet and just never take seriously, and you take them for granted. Because I just wish I gave him an ear. Because mm. he was always willing to learn. If there was ever a guy that I never gave an opportunity and a chance to was Trevor. Mm. He was just too annoying. Yeah, yeah. And I don't like pretty boys. <laughs> he was, and he was straight from that TV show where he was doing some TV show. And I didn't like TV guys. Yeah. Who are the, some of the other celebrities that you're not fond of? DJ Dira. Dira. Oh, yeah. He got you fired, eh? Yeah, Dira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he never, he never got me fired. Mm. I just don't like the guy. Why? I don't like. You did a song with him. Yeah, I with did. Two Seven Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did songs with him because mm. he. Uh, that's why I mean, uh, I'm a session artist. Mm. Now, when you're a session artist, you can take your three thousand, and then you let the other guy, you know, make yeah. the money. Mm. So yeah, now I I just never knew the industry and the uh, the workings and the ins and outs of the industry. So I wanted to just get paid and go get high. Mm. You know, mm. and I don't blame him for that. Mm. It's just that whenever you work with Tira, he will always work with you when you are flavor of the month. Mm. And then after that, he wants nothing to do with you. Mm. What happened to uh, 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 Usindo? Mm. When last did Sindo release a track? Mm. When last did I speak to Tira because he always tells me, he'll call me back. Mm. And then when last did he hear of Fisherman? Mm. 
Mm. When last did you hear, when last did you hear of knack music? Mm. Why must you always have new people in your stable? Because he moves with time. And good for him because it works for him. Mm. I, I can't falter him at that. Mm. But I just don't like the guy. Mm. Plain and simple. You asked me a question. Yeah. Who else don't I like? So No one else. It's just dear. <clears throat> no, plenty. Yeah, who else? Uh, let me see. Who else? Uh, there, there's quite a number of them. You know what? I don't want to mention about the guys that are in the music industry. Mm. I want to mention the guys that are in my space. Yeah, are, let's talk about those are, guys. That are, yeah. Let's talk about those uh, guys. Let me see. Who don't I like? Can I, can I get a refill here, please? Oh, can do you drink in studio here? <laughs> what studio? <laughs> Whatever. This is House of Soul. <laughs> eh? There's this no is studio. House of Soul. There's no studio here, Teddy. Feel free. Who Teddy. taught you how to drink? Who taught you to drink during working hours? You're also going to... Yeah. Yeah. I'll have a, yeah. Uh, make that a triple. <laughs> 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 Make that a triple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In your space? Uh, just in my space. You know why I don't like them? Because I feel they just fraudulent DJs. Mm. I don't like fraud DJs. Mm. You know, I don't like DJs that get away with murder and keep their jobs for a very long time because of... Uh, they Being just safe. They play safe. Mm. Like, I'm not a fan of your friend. Mm. Rock the Shade. I'm not a fan of Mo. Rock the Shades. I'm not a fan of his. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of his. Yeah. Um and no disrespect to him, I'm just not a fan of his radio. Yeah. So there's a difference with being a fan of a person and being a fan of, of their, their craft. craft. Yeah. So I'm not a fan of his craft. Mm. Not necessarily that I don't like him as an individual and it's just that that's my own personal like whenever I hear him on air I want to tune off mm. you know mm. another person that uh, I tune off when I do hear them is fresh mm. you know I mm. tune off I tune off why did you not from fresh uh, because uh, he, because he's been doing it for so many years and without getting fired he's the only DJ who does 6 to 9 or 3 to 6 and he's been working throughout his life he needs to take a break mm. so there's nothing new that he's going to come to me on a Tuesday or a Wednesday during our slow radio days and give me something that I've never heard. Mm, mm. So now he is worn out. That yeah. is why he has thanked his radio gods mm. for saving him. He needed the break. Mm. He needed but the break. But he's going to 947 now. Yeah, he's going to 94.7. 94. In fact, what a lot of people don't know was that Metro actually offered Fresh a gig when 947 had already approached him. Mm. You know, mm. yeah, and I also can't stand pro proverb. Mm. What is that thing he's doing? <laughs> I don't know. I've never listened to his show. You've never. Uh, you uh, must listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of his. I yeah. tune off. Mm. Um, 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 uh, 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 who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Glenn who Lewis. Else? What do you think about Glenn Lewis? Glenn Lewis. Who's Glenn Lewis? Glenn Lewis. Who's Glenn? Glenn. Glenn who? <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> like, does it still work? Yeah, he's on Radio 2000 now. What show does he do? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. So how can you ask me about a person you don't know who see what show he does? <laughs> I'm thinking perhaps you listen to him. Yeah, I used to listen to him when he was still on air at Metro. Mm. So who do you fuck with then? Hmm? Who do you like? Who me? Mm. I love Roger. Ah! The dirty ah, uncle! Ah, legend. 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 Ah. For none. Yeah. Roger. And, and he comes from the school of uh, Mark Gilman. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a he's a killer the kid. He's mm. a killer the kid deputy. Mm. You know, um, yeah, that 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 for me, for now is like wow, mm. wow. Like I can wake up on Roger anytime. Bad boy T. Safe. He's just okay. Mm. You know, he's mm. just uh, not so, his ex. So <laughs> 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 no, but he is. It sounds like um, the the DJs that played safe and never test the boundaries are the ones that have a long lasting career. Yeah, and the ones that push the boundaries, like yourself, your fat Joe, are the ones that always end up in hot water. And you call what we're in hot water? It's just that you know what the country's not ready for the type of radio we do. Mm. Well, I'm talking for myself. The type of radio that I do, hence that is why I mean I'm considered high risk. Mm. You know, I'm high risk, I'm unemployable because management, I become like, you know, people like, oh, yeah, no, don't touch. Mm. You know, he's, he's a loose cannon, yeah. but I come with ratings. 
But at what point do you now sit back and see, okay, cool, so these are, this is what these safe guys are doing. Mm-hmm. Let me try apply that to my, my situation. Just so you know, because we all have bills to pay and yeah. have kids. And mm, you know what I mean? Mm, mm. Don't you ever think about that? I do, I do, I do. But now it compromises my craft. And you're not willing to do that? You'd rather I'm not be willing. I'd rather, I'd rather be unemployed mm. than compromise my craft. Mm. It's just like any other artist. If you're going to say to me the type of art that I paint... Mm. It, it does not appeal to you and is offensive because they are kids. Then I, I just rather not paint. Yeah. Now you're taking bread out of my mouth, which is secondary, and that's obviously going to affect my way of living. Mm. But I'm not willing to change mm. the artistic approach I have yeah. when it comes to my craft because that's all I know. Now, if they, if, if, did you feel offended like with Metro not uh, calling you after this whole fresh debacle? Because... If there's one guy that Fresh is scared of in radio, it's you. No, you no, no, no. You know, you know, you know what? No, it, it wasn't because I understand where management sits. Mm. You know, I mean, it's not like I knock on two people's doors to ask for jobs. I'm mm. not in a position to ask any station manager for a gig. Mm. I get approached. Mm. You know, without sounding too cocky or anything. Mm. But when I do get approached, it's like you know exa- It's like there's been meetings after meetings after meetings. And then eventually they'll pick up the phone yeah. and be like, oh, okay, let's try this out. But at the end of the day, you look good as a program manager because yeah. you've just gotten an A-lister, you know, yeah. and you've got your ratings back in order. <laughs> but now I'm still high risk because I'm not going to promise you that I'm going to live according to whatever. Yeah. Yes, I'll do everything accordingly. And remember, there's a difference with me. Mm. It is not, and it has not been my approach on air that has been getting me fired. Mm. My approach on air has mm. always been professional. It's off, air. it's off air and it's the side things and the support structure mm. that is never given to us as media personalities mm. to say, well, these are the guidelines, we are going to support you here and there, and then let's move forward. Mm. Mm. So when I do come to your station and I do work for your station and I do do well, good. I bring in the ratings. But remember, I come from six months of unemployed. Six months of being unemployed. Mm. I've got debts for days. So, and I've got people that I owe, mm. you know. Yeah. So there's a lot of patching up, patching up, patching up. And that someone will actually call the station and say, he owes me. And then calls the newspaper, he owes me, you mm. know. Mm. We're living in that type of life right now mm. hey that one you know because now i'm on a situation where i'm on a pedestal and people want to bring you down mm. so it's all those things that when they combined they tend to wear and tear you off when did you realize fuck this industry is fucked up man the industry is not fucked up mm. the industry is not fucked up mm. The industry is not fucked up at all. I tell you something. It, it, it's people that are in the industry that are fucking ah. it up. The industry is not <laughs> fucked up. The industry is not fucked up, MacGyver. It's people that are sitting on the wrong chairs that are fucking up the industry. That is why I, I, I don't care whoever says what. The industry is still and will always remain what it is and what it has been. But it's people that are in positions and it's people that are sitting on different time slots that are wrong slots for them that are fucking it up. Hmm. And fuck them for that. Because they're wasting pure talent. There's, there's, it's like dead air all over the country right now. It's dead air. You know, the radio gods are turning in their graves right now. Radio gods are turning in their graves and saying, what is happening? You listen to radio, any radio right now, there is nothing wow. And we need to be able to actually identify new talent. And once we've identified new talent, keep those doors open. You need proper management structure. Don't just come in bringing a person who doesn't even understand that brand. I mean, really, you mean to, I've sat down with Vugile, you know, where he didn't know how he was going to actually, his first meeting with, with, with Gareth Cliff, he didn't know what he was going to say to Gareth Cliff. What, what are you going to say to Gareth Cliff coming from YFM? You're thrown into a deep end to work with this big-headed individual who's been... The creme de la creme and the, 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 the poster boy of the station, and then you must be snooping him. Who the fuck are you? You're nobody. He's not going to listen to you. 
You mean to tell me today, the guy that's management at Metro, who had to terminate uh, uh, Fresh's contract, had to sit Fresh down and tell Fresh that? Ask yourself, maybe he sent him an SMS or sent him a letter. What are you going to tell Fresh? Mm. Fresh has been the poster boy of South African radio all these years. How are you going to sit down with him and snoop him? You can't. He's unsnoopable. <laughs> He's unsnoopable. <laughs> Instead, you end up asking him, who do you think needs to go on drive? He, the, 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 the very same poster boy is the one who determines who goes where and when and how and why. Mm. So... You know what? You've got program managers that need to have balls. And you've got program managers who just come from nowhere, who are given all these big name figures that they've been listening to. I've had a program manager who said, I used to listen to your show when I was in standard four. What is he going to tell me about radio? (laughs) What is he going to tell me about radio? He's going to tell me textbook radio? No, it doesn't work like that. I do radio. I know radio. What is he going to tell me? Like, we end up just chilling and act like we're snooping each other. <laughs> Fuck. So, so radio in the country is, 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 is like that. We need to arm our program managers who have got to report to station managers. And those program managers need to understand. That is why I would rather have a person who's been a DJ to be a program manager, just like what you're seeing in football today. Football, you find soccer players who move on to becoming coaches and soccer right. managers because they've been in the field of play. They've been in the front line. They understand what radio is all about. Now, you're going to bring me someone who just comes from varsity who, who's done law. To be my program manager? Fuck that. It doesn't work that way. That person is not going to tell me anything. But that person is just going to be good about just protecting me when, I'm get, when I get called at ICASA and then ICA, uh, sorry, uh, at the BCCSA to actually understand what my case is. So now I'm going to have a program manager who understands just the legalities and where I went wrong and right. I'm not looking for a lawyer for a programs manager. I'm looking for a frontline player, a person we have to actually tape. We play Ebola together. We can have a field day. Not a person who's going to just come and try and just say, yeah, so um, here we are now, you know, and give me just stats and just give me. F- you, you. Go play first. Be in the front line. You've never been scratched. Get scratched. Understand the audience and the market. Don't just take any job as a program manager without understanding your target audience and your target market. Just don't, just don't, get, just don't get thrown in the deep end for the sake of you being employed because you're going to drown and you're going to compromise the brand. And when you compromise that brand, you're fucking up the whole station. That is why we get dropping in ratings. That is why we don't even have any station that is peaking right now. It's not all about safety nets. It's not all about gatekeeping. It's everything that has to do with actually moving brands forward. Let us look at trajectories. Let us look at margins. Let's look at target market. Let us grow audience. Then we're talking. Do you think you're the most misunderstood radio DJ of all time? Uh, I'm not the most misunderstood. I'm maybe the most talented, but I'm my worst enemy. Hmm. Wow. Why do you say that? I'm my worst enemy because I know all my pitfalls and all my weaknesses, and I know what's supposed to be right. I know everything that has to do with every radio. I've done radio stations. I've done PBS. I've done commercial. I can do even Radio Sonde Grenze. If I'm given a slot, I'll do breakfast there. I'm untouchable. So that's a fact. I understand content. I understand whatever it is that needs to be done. I understand mandate. I understand radio through and through without trying to sound cocky. And we need people to actually be able to face up and say to other personalities that are up and coming, why did you do this? What are you hoping to achieve by doing what you did? Why that link? Didn't you just want to switch off your mic? 
did you have to just go on air? Why didn't you just take a day off if you didn't feel like coming to work? Why did you have to do what you did? So if we don't have that, then you don't have a coach. Yeah. Mac, I'm angry with the state of radio in the country, and that's where it ends. Up until we correct the mistakes, and it's still never too late. We have to keep open door policies for studios. We have to make sure that we groom and we nurture talent that is up and coming. We have to stop looking at social media and trying to get people that are on TV because they've got so many followers and try and make them radio DJs. That does not work on air. You need a wholly grounded foundation who's a media personality and a radio anchor at heart before we start looking at numbers. Because you know what? If you take a Bonang, she's got more followers on Twitter than a Roger Good. But Roger Good still has much more ratings than what Bonang did when she was at Metro. So your following does not resonate what you're doing. So mathematically, they've got it wrong. And up until they correct all those rights, they must understand it's not about social media only. Yes, social media is a support structure. We cannot avoid it because we're living in the times we're living in. But up until mathematically it's been calculated that you being a favorite when it comes to tweeting, it doesn't mean you'll bring that same audience when it comes to listening and your listeners because it's two totally different things. Radio will never die. Radio will always be radio, and let's treat radio as radio. Oh, way too enough with you. Well, I'm, I'm shopping around, and they are shopping around. Do you have any regrets, though, in your career? Yeah, I do. Like? I do. Um, being more experimental, having a big head. You had um, a big head, Chili? Yeah, I did. That's a fact. Wow. You've never struck me as someone who had a big head, did I did have a big head. Yeah. I mean, who who wouldn't have a big head when you're sponsored by Viglietti? How how do you how 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 do I have a tattoo with a chili M for M which is a fork for Maserati and say you don't have a big head? When Viglietti Motors gives you a Maserati, then you know you're the head kid. Mm. And you've got GM Motors who gives you three hammers. And you've got your own personal private car, which is an SLK AMG and a special parking in Rosebank. You mean to tell me I'm not going to have a big head? And you live in a house that you rename Archieville because when uh, you've got a hit song that's called Archieville. Mm. I wanted to Archie post my gate and engrave them with Archieville. No one just stays in Bryanston. Do you regret that first line that you took in, 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 in Cape Town? First line wasn't in Cape Town. Cape Town was... Uh, you know what? I, 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 I beat the system. You know, In a sense, we will always be considered recovering drug addicts. So I'm not saying I'm... Um, when you go to rehab, rehab helps you understand that you will always be considered... That is why you base this interview, you basing it on. And it's unfortunate that you're basing it on my drug use and whatever it was. There was a path that I had to go through, which I don't regret. But every interview I will have, every person that will speak to me will always try and get ratings out of me being using drugs. Yes, it's a fact. It's in the public space. It's in the public domain. Everyone knows I've done drugs. But when you're going to base my life after 30 years from now, 60 years from now, Uwiti, do you regret? That's a stupid question coming from you. Mm. I'd expect it much better. What do you want your life to be based on? I want to be based on, here's a guy, if I had to write my own obituary and my own engrave, my own tombstone, here was a radio guy. Beneath here lies a true radio airman. Mm. Airmanship is what he believed in. Nobody created as much talent and spotted so many talented people and converted so many people into household names today than I did. Name one person that Fresh made. Name one person that Thomas made. Name one person 
that Fat Joe made from the first school of radio personalities, which was YFM at the time. Name any person that Sammy T has ever created to say what they spotted their talent. Today, I mean, I'm the only person who's done that. And which are those talents that you're talking about? You, Dineo, Dineo Lusenga, William Lahong. I can mention, I can mention even in Durban, the talent that I've spotted, people that were never, ever, ever understanding, that never understood radio, uh, 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 V with the Don, you know, people that just come to me and say they want to learn radio, I open that door. And there's nothing wrong with sharing information and don't be afraid to share the little that you have with people that are just interested in getting into that space. Because the old school DJs that taught me radio were never afraid of competition. Hmm. Fucking hell. Hi, Teddy. Catch me wherever I am, where I will resurface between 6 and 9 in the morning. That's all. I won't take anything less or I'll never take anything else. Hmm. It's a fact. I think that's when you close it up. Yeah? yeah How's your radio career going? Ah, uh, mine is the same, you know. Same shit. Waiting for yeah. the next gig. But you must know the one thing. But I'm also high risk, just like you. So. Yeah. So I've... Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've uh, Nothing wrong with that, man. I've... Uh, what is it when you... Uh, I've accepted... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't ever compromise the artistic man in you. Because you will you will be out of bread. But that bread will not be out of your mouth for a very long time. But you will have crafted something in someone's heart and you will always be remembered for the great work that you did. Come rain, come shine. Fresh is engraved in the radio books. No matter where he resurfaces, come rain, come shine, I might not like him. Mo has crafted his craft the way he has. And much respect to everyone that I say. I don't respect. I just don't believe in what they do on air. You're not afraid of being broke, no? Uba, me? Mm. No. No. I, I, I said it. I, I, I'm not afraid. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not afraid to fall. Mm. Not being broke. I'm not afraid to fall. Cause, 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 cause if if we have people like Abu Mandela who could actually do 27 years and still rise above who are after you? that, who am I? What is six months without a gig? Now I'm gonna be the laughing stock with Tarasebens. If that makes you happy and makes you go to sleep at night, good for you. I'll catch you in the front. Would you ever take up um, a coaching management position? I'd like to have a producer. <laughs> <laughs> the only program or station manager who has a producer. I can't type. Yeah, like yeah. I sit down, I type like this. Uh, yeah. When am I going to send the email? Yeah. I'll just be good at inspiring. Yeah. You know, station, manage, more... station manager right now, Metro FM, give me a lineup. From the morning. Morning? Right now. Me? Yeah. Six to nine? Five to nine. Whatever whatever they term it as. Mm-hmm. Um, nine to twelve. I'd bring back fresh. Nine for nine to twelve. Nine to twelve, that's where he belongs. <laughs> <laughs> Press that button. He sounds he sounds <laughs> Fresh was not supposed to be fired. Fresh was supposed to have been changed came April. That's where they missed the point. He, he's going to be speaking to housewives. <laughs> he had sound good. He's the only DJ who's been married all this time. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to make them happy. <laughs> Continue. Yeah, 12 to 3. Uh, 12 to 3, I will bring in... Um, 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 um. You know, 12 to 3, for some reason, I'll give a show. Mm. 
I'd give Fat Joe two after three. Mm. But put him on a leash. Mm. But a, a, a very a leash that breeds. Mm. Let him loose. Let him play a free role. Mm. You know, mm. don't leash him too much, because you'll fire him. Because mm. he will strap. And then drive. Drive. I'll bring in Roger Good. Fuck! What a lineup. No Gareth Cliff. Roger Good. No Gareth Cliff. Mm. Roger Good. <laughs> I did. This Ultimate. Has been this has been amazing. Thank you Thank so you. much, man. That's just my views and the views that I express do not necessarily reflect the views of House of Soul and those of Mac G's podcast, okay. but those of this man. I can end it with a prayer. You want to end it with a prayer? Yeah. No, yeah, cool. Yeah. Let's do it. I go as the, the father. Must we close hmm? eyes? No, we don't need to close our eyes. Oh, we don't close our eyes? Yeah. Okay. You repeat after me. Okay, I repeat after you. Yeah, if I'm the father, you I'm say, our father. Our father, all right, good. Who art on the airwaves. Who art on the airwaves. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom comes. Your kingdom comes. Your will be done on the airwaves. You will be done on the airwaves. As it is on the ground and in heaven. As it is on the ground and in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily dose of entertainment. Our daily dose of entertainment. And forgive those. And forgive those who try and try. become competitors with you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, <laughs> 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 show me love. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko.